Hello everybody and welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to the episode here in the series. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. This video we're going to continue building out fun UIs based on apps that I'm familiar with, but doing so in Compose here. So as we can see here in the emulator, we have a little bit of a rankings view here that would exist in the app OpenSea. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with it, it is an NFT trading marketplace kind of idea. Cool little app. Uh, I know that it is built in Compose and this looks like uh, what they call the rankings page here. So as we can see, there'll be a bunch of different collections that are ranked. Uh, you know, in this case, we just have five hard coded. They all are the same, but ideally they would be different, right? But we're dynamically loading images. We have each one recognizing if it's expanded or collapsed. Uh, you know, we kind of have a nice little animation during that as well. So there's a lot to cover here. I may break it up into two videos if it gets a little long. But without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into the code here. And so this is what our composable looked like before. We'll get it back to that state. And let's just start over here with our data class. So we have the OpenSea collection data class. We have name, image, rank, is verified Boolean, some information about the trade volume in the last 24 hours, and then something I've called here the other stats, which kind of is that you know expanded state uh, that we saw before. There is one composable here that I've already built that I just want to cover real quick uh, because we're basically going to use it for that, you know, expanded state. But more or less, we have a column that just centers things vertically and horizontally, applying any external modifier that's passed in. And then two texts there. We have a label text and a value with specific coloring and font weights to get that look, uh, you know, that we saw in the emulator, the one over here. Uh, this bottom row here. So we'll cover this more in depth when we get there, but I do just want to leave it here uh, because it's simple enough. It's not necessarily the bulk of the work that needs to be done, but it will save us some time. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Why not? Taking a look at this here and go ahead and uh, rerun things so that we lose it. First things first, we're going to need a column here. And inside of that column, we're basically going to have two different rows, right? We're going to have that primary row with all the information. And then we're going to have another row here uh, that is kind of encapsulated with the, you know, is expanded. And if so, then we will show that row. Otherwise, we won't. So this is kind of the skeleton that I'm thinking of right now. Speaking of the is expanded, as we saw before, each row had their own, you know, logic to basically run if it was uh, open or not. So we can basically say our var is expanded. We're going to do by remember, and we're going to have a mutable state of, and it will be a Boolean here uh, that is going to be set to false in the beginning. We will use this later on, uh, basically when we have that button up and running. So I'm going to use the emulator here to basically just show, you know, what we need here. But to me, the first element that we need or the first thing we should do inside of this row, we're going to say our vertical alignment is going to be our alignment dot center vertically. First things first, we can just take our text. The text here is going to be the openc collection dot rank. That is an integer. So we just need to call dot to string that will get us the first little bit on the left there. The other thing I'm going to do here is we're going to apply a modifier of a padding where our horizontal is going to be 16. Next, we're going to need our little bit of an image here. And I do have this, uh, you know, image loading library called coil inside of our project. But we're going to come back to this at some point because I think it's worth talking a little bit more about it later. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a surface so that we can very easily get that rounded corner shape. Let's go with a 12 DP, looks good to me. And for right now, we're just gonna set a color of light gray on it. So when we preview the actual uh, composable, we'll get a little bit of something there. And then basically we're gonna have a nice little to do here, our image. And then we're going to need uh, this section here, right? Which is uh, the title of the collection, a little verified icon, and then a button here that allows us to click you know, more or less, it kind of updates, it does expand and collapse this element. Uh, and then therefore, we are going to start getting into our is expanded Boolean. Because inside of that column, we're going to have a row, the row is going to contain a text element, which is going to be our open C collection dot name to the right of that we are then going to have an image here, icons dot rounded dot verified is that little check mark that we see there Add in our content description we go ahead and copy this vertical alignment into this row as well because we are going to want the same uh, to be true with the text and this little icon here i think the other thing that we're going to need to apply here uh, is a modifier 
with which will have a modifier dot weight of one f which will tell this text to you know take up as much room as it actually can and in the event that it overflows because we are going to say max lines equals one we will say text I think it's called overflow, oh, overflow. Um, we will go with the text overflow dot ellipses option and then I do think that outside of that row we or underneath that row because again we are in a column we're going to want a text button is that what it's called yep our on click here uh, we'll come back to that in a second and we're going to basically say otherwise we will say more right our is expanded equals not is expanded so that will just toggle our expanded state allowing us to do something like that not only change the text here but also animate this bottom section here that kind of comes into play all right so far so good let's move on to the last little bit which is going to be another column trade volume in the last 24 hours and the trade percent in the last 24 hours right that's what these two values are this is green because it is a value greater than zero. Uh, it could actually be red text if it was a, you know, a negative value there. So we will account for that in our logic. But very simply here, we are just going to say uh, our OpenSea collection dot trade volume in the last 24 hours. That is, no, that is denoted as a big decimal, so we'll convert it to a string. And then we'll just add the word or the, the letters ETH for Ethereum. We go ahead and copy that for our bottom section there, the trade percent change last 24 hours. And then we are going to need to set our color here. So we're just gonna define a positive value there. We're just going to say, or a little Boolean, we're just going to say if this is greater than or equal to uh, big decimal zero. So then our color is just gonna say if is positive, R dot, no, not R dot color. Oh man, still thinking about uh, still thinking about some XML there. Color dot red. Uh, nope, this should be red, and then otherwise this one will be green. Wow. Uh, sorry about that. All right, so we'll put a little to do down here in the expanded state. I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, but what I am interested in is seeing how this looks as a first pass here. So let's go ahead and uh, split that. Let's rebuild it. And let's see, you know, how we are looking. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of things we need to clean up. Yes, there definitely, definitely, definitely is. Ah, okay. So first issue here is our surface is not defined as a particular size. So I'm going to close the simulator, get a little bit more room here. And then we're going to say uh, our modifier equals our modifier dot size with maybe, I don't know, let's see how 75 dp looks. Okay, so we have a big gray square now, so that's awesome. Um, why is this so tall? Dot height, and then it will be the intrinsic size min to basically tell the column to uh, wrap content, basically. We don't want it as big as, uh, okay, that looks like it's getting a little bit better. Perfect. I'm gonna apply a horizontal padding onto our surface here. Uh, this guy so that we get a little bit of separation in between those elements. Okay, that's super helpful, but this thing continues to grow here. Why is this getting bigger? Aha, uh -huh. okay, so I figured out why it's so tall. Took me a lot longer than I wanted to admit, but we're all learning Compose here, so we can undo that to get it vertically. The problem is, as I said, we do have big decimals here. So even though our, uh, you know, when we created the object, it looks like this, uh, and like this, we do see there's a lot more information at the end of those, uh, you know, big decimals there. So we're going to have to round those. One thing we can do to round a big decimal is call set scale. And we'll use the first one where we can say new scale two. And then our rounding mode is going to be half up. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and put it there as well for our other, you know, big decimal. And hopefully that should kind of get this stuff back to a better state here. All right, so our UI is starting to come together a little bit. I think there's still some cleanup we can do here. So let's see, first things first, I think in our overall column here, we can very much so say uh, padding, we'll go with a vertical padding of 16.dp. Okay, that'll give us some breathing room there. And then on this column here, Horizontal alignment is going to be alignment.end, which should push everything to the, the right-hand side of this column as opposed to the left. 
what we're used to. So there we go. Now we see it kind of working a little bit better. All right, I think just a tiny bit of padding here uh, on our image as well. So we'll say our modifier equals modifier.padding, where start is going to be 4.dp. Sounds good. Let's rerun it, see how that looks. All right, very cool. Now what happens if we change our name here to mute with long name? Let's see how our text reacts here. Hmm. So we see that it kind of gets a little wonky. Let's see if we undo that modifier, put that modifier dot weight of one F back. Okay, so I, so we were getting the ellipses here, but we've lost our last column. All right, and so that seems to be updated there. So our column here, which has the, the name of it and the verified status here, uh, we apply the weight to that entire column of one, and we removed the weight of one from this right-hand column, uh, and that seems to do it. Let's just create a modifier with some padding to start of for DP, sure, so that we can kind of push that out if we need to. Rerun things here, and I think we're gonna be in pretty good shape. So, looks like there's a little bit more breathing room there. Wonderful. I do think that, uh, you know, OpenSea supports dark mode here, and I know we're not doing too much in the realm of theming, but I do think that we can definitely, uh, you know, take advantage of uh, some colors here. So our color is going to be our OS underscore background, OpenSea background, just something that I fetched from their website. Ha, huh, interesting. Okay, so obviously we want to apply the background first and then the padding so that we get the entire thing to be the correct color. And then I'm just going to go through here and just update our colors, I guess for now, just to be our color dot white on a bunch of our text. Uh, all right, and rerunning things here, we definitely have a bit more of a darker theme, which is wonderful. Last little bit here is our image. Nope, sorry, it's called color filter. It's going to equal a color filter. All right, and so we can set the color filter on our image here to be color filter dot tint, and we can set the color that we care for, and now we see that the icon has that white tint, which is wonderful. Thanks for sticking with me if you made it this far. If you've been enjoying the content so far, smash that like button, help me out, and consider subscribing if you are brand new here. For a little bit of extra credit before we go here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a nice little helper function, actually in this case, an extension function on our big decimal to basically do this, because we see we are setting the scale to two, rounding it to half up, calling to string. So we're kind of, uh, you know, doing similar things here uh, in multiple places. So let's go ahead and define this private function on a big decimal. We're just gonna call it scale. So then the new scale is going to be an integer. We're gonna default it to two because, uh, you know, that's a pretty standard uh, thing that we wanna do. And let me just copy all of this. And we're just going to say return this dot set scale. Rounding mode instead of two there, we're going to use our new scale. And then we're just gonna put all this on one line and wonderful. Now we can just simply take that scale function and instead of calling all of that, we can just do scale. All right, we're having some issues for that. So I'm gonna say scale for display. Okay, great. We're just gonna copy that and go there. And then we're just gonna do the same thing where it says scale for display. So it just kind of cleans up our code a little bit there, uh, which is helpful, of course. We are going to move this is positive out to the top of this function because we might use it in the future. So just a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of tidying, uh, you know, up some content here, but nothing too different here, not changing anything. Went ahead and commented out our is expanded state which we are going to get to in the next episode here. So again, thank you if you've made it this far. Let's rerun things to make sure we're not broken. Uh, but we will pick this up in the next state or in the next episode where we're going to handle our expanded state, uh, get a little bit more content on screen, maybe have it running on the emulator. Go ahead and load our image dynamically and all that stuff. Uh, so it should be a fun one to kind of clean things up here. Again, all the code is available on GitHub, so go ahead and check it out for yourself if you're interested. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks so much. Have a good day.